Hello guys, myself C.B. Vargis, Assistant Professor, Department of Safety and Fire Engineering, Tokyo Institute of Science and Technology. Today I am going to give a short presentation on fire hose and its classification. Before that, I would be grateful if you could ask me questions through comment section at the end of the presentation. This is from Module 5, Subject Fire Engineering Fundamental. If you look at this picture, you will see a rolled fire hose. What is a fire hose? It is a high pressure hose that carries water or other fire retardant substance to a fire to extinguish it. Outdoors, it attaches either to a fire engine or a fire hydrant. In indoor purpose, it can be permanently attached to a building standpipe or plumbing system. The usual working pressure of fire hose can be vary between 8 to 20 bar. According to NFPA 1961 fire hose standards, its bursting pressure is in excess of 110 bar. That is the bursting pressure of uh, fire hose as per NFPA standard. And the fire hose, that is one of the basic essential pieces of firefighting equipment. It is necessary to convey water either from an open water supply or pressurized water supply. Now, I am going to fill you in on the history of fire hose. In Amsterdam, that is in Dutch, Dutch people, a superintendent of fire brigade, his name is Jan van der Heiden, and his son Nicholas took firefighting to its next step with the fashioning of the first fire hose in 1673 that is in 16th century they developed a 15 meter or a 50 foot length of leather fire hose where sun together like a bootleg there are some limitation for that fire hose even with the limitation of pressure the attachment of hose to the goose and neck nozzle allowed closer approaches and more accurate water application in the United States, the fire hose was introduced in Philadelphia, that was in 1794, that is 17th century. That is a canvas hose, it's proved it's insufficiently durable and some leather hose was then used. And the modern usage. So the modern fire hose used a variety of natural synthetic fabrics and elastomers in their construction. So these materials allow the hose to be stored wet without rotting and to resist the damaging effects of exposure to sunlight or chemicals. A fire hose, it must be rugged, it must be dependable, capable of carrying water under high pressure. Several factors contribute to the dependability and life of the hose. So they are the quality and the suitability of the hose the care with which it can it is handled at fire the main is how we maintain how we care the how we care and how we store the fire hose so these are the on the side you can see these are the requirements of a fire hose for the better performance a fire hose should maintain these requirements so it should be reliable a fire hose must be reliable must be flexible it should have a long duration uh, we can change the length of the um, length and the diameter of the fire hose um, as per our requirement. And the friction loss, low friction loss, resistance to rot, rot and rotten, rotten, resistance to rot, then pressure and acceptance. Test. These are the basic requirements of a uh, fire hose. Okay. okay. Now let us move on to the topic. There are different types of fire hose. Delivery hose, can categorize into delivery hose, hose reel hose, suction hose. These are the categories of uh, fire hose. Let's remember it. Let us look in, uh, let us look into delivery hose. So delivery hose, it, it it laid from or it connect between the delivery side of the pump to the spot of incident always water passing through it at a pressure greater than the atmospheric pressure 
again the delivery hose is divided into lined hose and unlined hose look at this picture we can see the delivery hose okay next move to the unlined hose so due to the, its tendency to rot under damp storage conditions by microbacterial and fungal attacks or other difficulties the use of this type of hose is now limited so now mainly used for forest firefight the lead hose is applicable only for forest firefight okay we can classify the uh, unlined hose into type a hose and a type b hose type a means that is a normal fire hose rubber lined or rubberized fabric line which is manufactured with the rubber lined or rubberized fabric line and type b hose that which elastomeric outer coating and covering has been applied or incorporated as reinforcement to give the hoses very low absorption of fluids such as oils grease acids and alkalis etc so the unlined hose is manufactured by using uh, the materials like flax hemp rami cotton these are the fibers flax hemp rami cotton uh, flax hemp the natural fibers taking from some plants flax plant hemp plant it is a natural fibers so the unlined hose is constructed by using these types of natural fibers next one is lined hose okay what do you mean lined hose so the due to the large uh, due to the quantities of large reduction of weight coil diameter and packing volume together with non susceptible to rotting and providing a thicker cover for additional protection against air and heat these types of hose are now widely used in fire hose okay these are the modern types of fire hose lined hose which is manufactured by using nylon uh, the synthetic material nylon terlin those two materials are synthetic nylon and uh, terlin the modern material modern uh, fire hose is lined fire hose got it we can also divide the lined hose into different types uh, type 1 lined hose uh, means the lined hose without external jacket treatment such hose absorbs liquid into reinforcement jacket and requires drying after use the second type lined hose is coated lined hose not it coated lined hose this has a thin elastic outer coating that reduces liquid absorption into the jacket and may slightly improve abrasion resistance the third lined hose is that is a covered lined hose uh, the covered lined hose has a thicker elastic cover that prevents liquid absorption but also adds substantial improvements to abrasion and heat resistance next other important one is hose reel hose so that is a non percolating delivery hose non percolating non percolating hose means they are generally used for delivering water non percolating hose they are generally used for delivering water the non percolating hose which consists of a reinforced jacket made from polyester or nylon yarns it is constructed by using made by using nylon yarns this type of hose has an inner lining of vulcanized rubber fixed to the jacket by an adhesive then the use of non percolating hose is recommended in certain applications as friction losses will be much less than that of percolating hoses so the hose reel hose is a percolating delivery hose of small internal diameter is 19 mm carried on drum which has to be flexible you can see in flat uh, buildings apartments uh, you can see this hose reel hose which has to be flexible but at the same time should not flat and duly when rolled on it is used for taking a hose line quickly inside building using the available supply carried on the fire appliances the water flow rate of the hose reels not where that is a standard uh, Uh, standard uh, standard discharge rate of a uh, hose resource uh, it should be it should not be less than 24 liters per minute and the range of jet shall not be less than 6 meters the hose reel uh, hose reel hose it can be uh, provided it can be provided a jet at a length of maximum length of uh, sorry uh, at a minimum length of 6 meters then now move on to the next topic 
air and maintenance of hose these are the some reasons there are some several reasons these are the main major reasons for decaying of hose abrasion mildew shock rub rust and some other general reasons so now let us uh, <coughs> move on to so abrasion means that is a process of scraping something away it is a scraping process or a wearing process so because of dragging of hose into the or dragging of hose is the main cause so abrasion can also take place at points at other points of contact example parapets roof cornices etc how can we prevent the abrasion so do not drag a hose wet or dry protect the hose by placing old hose or hose bandage at first point where it touches the ground after leaving the pump delivery and at all other points of contact then use proper hose ramp this ramps hose ramps where a hose line crosses a road you can see in the picture this is a picture from this figure we can understand the protection of hair hose laid down across the road so they are using some ramps uh, these methods are used for protecting the fire hose uh, which is laid across the road got it next problem is mildew the cause of mildew is that is a fungal attack mildew it is a fungal attack fungal which at given suitable condition of moisture and heat uh, if the hose insufficiently dried or stored in damp state provides the condition which promote the growth of mildew how can you prevent the mildew by proper drying of hose and keep ventilation without exposure to direct sunlight uh, by this way you can uh, avoid the mildew problems so proper drying is needed for avoiding the mildew problems. next shock another problem another major problem of fire hose shock the cause is roll of hose thrown roughly to the ground or allowing water to flow to rapidly without giving sufficient time or if a hand controlled branch is shut off suddenly the hose may be subjected to shock okay that means uh, and unexpected or uh, unexpected shut off of uh, hose that leads to the shock sudden vibration of the um hose and the prevention how can we prevent the uh, shock roll of hose should never be thrown roughly to the ground flow of water into hoses into hose and increase of pressure to be done gradually okay the problem faced by uh, fire hose care of hose how can we care the fire hose this is very important thing uh, the new hose should be removed from its packing and the coil loosened hose should be stored in cool dry well ventilated space proper ventilation when storing hose short bench should be avoided as much as possible and don't be uh, dragged the fire hose through the uh, rough surfaces A rubber line hose should not be exposed to hot dry air nor stored in the sun rays hose should never be bent or kept to acute angle especially under water these are the ways you can these are the ways used to care the uh, fire hose okay so that brings us to the end of this presentation well that's about it for now we have talked about the fire hose its function requirements categories of hose and categories of hose and uh, causes of uh, fire uh, uh, causes of fire damages mm. i hope my presentation today will help you with what i said at the beginning thank you for listening and now if there are any question i would be pleased to answer them thank you